So we've been joined in the studio by Nicodem Habia. Uh, he is a president. He's the president of the Democrats, one of the parties there in Togo. Um, we and, and clearly, if you would recall, and you'll be following uh, politics in Togo, he went on a, a hunger strike some time ago, clearly because of the what they describe as uh, undemocratic ways of the leadership of um, Fonya Singbe. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. Good evening, and thank you very much for having me. How, in your, in your observation, how has the election gone uh, so far in Togo? I mean, clearly there is a president-elect likely to be sworn in soon, but what has the process been for you? Uh, before I start to answer your question, uh, I want to thank President Akufuado, who helped me during my hunger strike. Right. And uh, I want to also thank the Ghana population who prayed for me. And uh, because of President Akufuado, I am back on my feet, mm -hmm. I have uh, my health back. Okay. So once again, thank you very much. And I just want to let you know that we don't have an election in Togo. Because you can't have election, especially in dictatorship, this is very hard. Mm. And only one person is controlling all the uh, electoral systems. The, uh, the uh, CENI, we call it CENI, mm. Electoral Commission. So he controls all those, 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 those institutions. So that's not election in Togo. Mm. That's why we, our party, we didn't participate at the, this election. It's because of that, this kind of election that we'll be ruling in Togo by one family more than one decade. Mm. Yeah, the Nyasingbe family. So we need to stop this kind of things. You just said that, Wanep said that they were irregularities. Irre and irregularities. And but ECOWAS say there were no irregularities. Mm. That's why the ECOWAS said uh, yesterday. So I just want to tell you once again that without reforms, we can never but have it looks as any if, and you're like good you said, election in Togo. In the last decade, there seem to have been political uneasiness in Togo. If other international bodies like ECOWAS and uh, the United Nations have not said or done anything to change this um, dictatorship, as you call it, what then is the best way forward? Uh, I, can, I can say that. Let me tell you that in '58, that was the same thing. It's the United Nations that organized the election, and our first democratic president, Silvanus Olympio, won that election. I think that will be the, what will happen in Togo, too. Otherwise, we, are, we have to free ourselves. We have to demonstrate. And let me inform you that in next coming days, we, we are going to go back to the streets to have demonstrations to free our You country. mean there's going to be demonstrations in Togo in the next few days? Next few days, we are going to have serious demonstrations in Togo. If there is one candidate who is problematic in the, in the eyes of the many, why is it that all the political parties cannot come together and elect one candidate, and then you are very likely to have the masses supporting that person? Some of your uh, colleagues uh, talk about Gambia example. Mm -hmm. Gambia is different from Togo. This government count on the army to okay. do what they are doing. This is a very different case in West Africa. Mm -hmm. And we know that the only country that doesn't know democracy up to now is Togo. So that's what we can use. We can choose only one candidate. Mm. What is happening, even we didn't finish the election, they have stopped everything. The army helped them. If you go to Togo right now, the, the whole country is militarized. You have the military. Militaries or military, military people supposed to, 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 to help the country, protect the, the country, citizens. protect yeah. the citizens. But if you go to Togo, whether in the market, whether on the football ground, Wherever you know, it is, is everywhere my, there final, are my final question, people in the country. My final question is the demonstration. What is the guarantee that this is going to be a peaceful demonstration? Looking at the fact that in previous years, there almost always seem to have been some chaos breaking out at these demonstrations. We will do peaceful demonstration, but let me tell you that we are in face of, we have a, a, a dictator. So anything can happen, mm. and we have to be ready, and we are ready to face anything. How? That readiness is where the problem is. If you say you are ready, are you mm. then also going to retaliate if there are attacks on you? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, sure. Let me be honest with you. We are not going to be afraid, lay back, and to continue this kind of situation. No, mm. we have to be ready and free that country. We hope that um, hope, peace, 
and love would come to the nation of Togo, our neighboring uh, brothers. This is News at 10. Thank you very much, Nikodem Habia. Uh, he is the leader of the Democrats' Party in Togo.